Now, let us take up the 41st question. With reference to regulation of commodity derivatives in India, consider the following statements. The Forward Markets Commission is entrusted with the regulation of commodity markets in India. FMC regulates the commodity derivatives market under the provisions of Forward Contract Regulation Act of 1952. Which of the above statements is are correct? Now, to attempt this question, first of all, we need to understand what is meant by a commodity derivative. A commodity derivative. Now, the term or the phrase commodity derivative is made of two words. First is your commodity. Commodity basically means any physical good. Sorry, a primary good. The commodity market deals in the trading of the primary goods as compared vis-a-vis -vis your manufactured goods. Okay? That is, it deals in the trading of primary goods. Now, there are two kinds of commodities. One is a soft commodity. This is your wheat, rice, crop, etc. Then you have something called as hard commodity. Hard would be your gold, silver or bullion. Now, the second term is your derivative. The second term is derivative. What is a derivative? Derivative is a financial instrument which derives its value from the underlying asset. Okay. So, now what is the meaning of a commodity derivative? Commodity derivative basically means it's a financial instrument that derives its value from the underlying commodity. From the underlying commodity. Commodity could be your rice, wheat, gold, silver, etc. Now, this is the actual physical commodity from which this financial instrument derives its value. And the market in which these commodity der derivatives are traded is called your commodity derivatives market. Now, the question is asking who regulates the commodity derivative market? Is it the Forward Markets Commission? Also, the second statement talks about a law which is your Forward Contract Regulation Act. What is meant by forward contracts? Forward contract is nothing but it's simply a contract in which the agreement is done much before the actual physical exchange of goods take place. Okay? Suppose you have a farmer and you have a person A. Okay? Now the farmer agrees or uh, does a contract with person A. He tells him Ki I will sell you 5 kgs of rice at rupees 10 per kg after 6 months. Hai? So this is just the contract that is happening at this period. The actual exchange of commodity and the pay that the farmer will receive for the selling of commodity would be done after a period of 6 months. So what happens after 6 months? The farmer simply gives the person A the 5 kgs of rice at rupees 10. And uh, the person gives the farmer rupees 50 kilos for the 5 kgs of rice. So this is what is simply a format, uh, forward contract. Now the answer, the answer for this question is uh, C. That is both the statements are wrong. C. Forward Commission, Markets Commission, it earlier regulated the commodity markets. However, following the National Spot Exchange Limited scam, the responsibility for regulation of forward markets uh, for the commodity markets was shifted to the Securities Exchange Board of India. Further, it was also stipulated that FMC and the presence of SEBI led to overlap between these two uh, with regard to your regulation. Moreover, FMC was deemed weak. FMC used to regulate the commodity market under your FCRA. However, with the shifting of responsibility to the SEBI, the FCRA stands repealed. 
What is FCRA? It is the Forward Contracts Regulation Act. Basically an act for regulating the forward contracts. So this stands repealed. The commodity market has been brought under the SCRA, which is your uh, Securities Contract Regulation Act of 1956. Now this is a stronger act as compared to your FCRA and this will boost the confidence in the market players. Okay. So this was your 41st question. Moving on to the 42nd question. Consider the following statements. Now this question carries the description of a certain type of painting and from these three statements you are supposed to tell which uh, art form it is ta talking about or which painting. So this is the question. It is a type of scroll painting. It depicts the exploits of local deities that are often carried from place to place accompanied by traditional singers. The outlines of the paintings are first drawn in black and later it is filled with colors. And which of these are the paintings? Odisha, Pachitra, Gondart, Fard painting, Kaligat painting, etc. Okay. Now, first of all, what is a scroll painting? To understand this, we must first know what is a scroll. Scrolls are of two kinds. You have the horizontal scroll and you have the vertical scroll. Okay. Now, you must have seen these in movies or uh, the older movies or the cartoons, okay, na? which depict the older period. You had a two rolling cylinders, right? And these were connected by a piece of canvas or a paper. Okay. So now, if the rolling is being done in this direction, it becomes a horizontal scroll. Okay. And uh, this canvas, piece of canvas or paper will contain either writing, it can contain information that has to be delivered or it can contain certain uh, pictures which depict something, then it becomes a scroll painting. Uh, similarly, you can have the uh, cylinders in this format which are connected by your uh, piece of canvas or a paper. So this becomes your vertical scroll. So these are your two forms of uh, paintings, okay? scroll paintings. Now, the description in the question is basically talking about your fard painting. Fard painting is again a scroll uh, which basically has a piece of canvas which is called fard. Now, this fard paintings are uh, famous for in Rajasthan, especially in the Bhilwada district. It depicts the heroic deeds of local heroic figures. And they, create, uh, they use bright colors and subtle colors. The outlines are first drawn in black and then these are filled with colors. Main themes uh, depict the deities and their legends and the stories of erstwhile Maharajas. Okay, the unique feature of art painting are the bold lines and two-dimensional treatment of figures with the entire composition arranged in sections. Okay, uh, now let us move on to the next question, 43rd. Consider the following statements of about Sufism. Now, Bhakti movement and Sufism are very, very, very important from the perspective of UPSC prelims as well as mains. Every year, especially since 2013, when the cha uh, when the pattern of mains changed, and since 2011 when CSAT was introduced, uh, the Bhakti and the Sufism uh, questions have always figured in both your prelims as well as mains. So, in the medieval period, these two topics must be thoroughly covered. Now, the question says, it has given two statements. They believed in the essential unity of all religions and Siddhas and yogic postures had been the Hindu influence on Sufism. You are supposed to find out the correct statements. Coming to the explanation, the first statement is correct. Sufism is a common term for Islamic mysticism. Okay, Islamic mysticism. They were liberal in religious outlook, believed in the essential unity of all religion. Thus, first statement is correct. They preached the spirituality through music and doctrines that professed union with God. Union with God in Hinduism is called yoga. Okay. And uh, Sufism had originated in Iran and found a con congenial uh, atmosphere in India under the Turkish rule. Is this clear? Now, statement 2 is also correct. Such music attracted Hindus who started visiting the dargahs in large number. The Hindu impact on Sufism also became visible in the form of siddhas and yogic postures. Okay? Coming to the 44th, Lord Buddha's image is sometimes shown with hand gestures which are known as Varad Mudra. Now, Lord Buddha, uh, the hand gestures, there are many hand gestures of uh, Lord Buddha. Now, 
a very detailed question will not be asked on the gestures however you should have a broad idea of what each uh, hand gesture symbolizes so just go through the entire list from your textbook or from the internet and just have a broad idea of what each uh, hand gesture is symbolizing so the question is basically asking about varad mudra now varad mudra is nothing but it is a gesture of charity okay it's a gesture of charity so varad is nothing but a gesture of charity it represents offering welcome charity giving compassion etc performed with the help of both hands in which the palm of right hand facing forward and fingers extended and left hand palm placed near the omphalos with extended fingers is this clear theek hai 45th question during the term of alauddin khilji hulia had uh, been used for these are the options provided now the administration in in your medieval history what is important from pre perspective as well as mains the administrations under various rulers the administration under the delhi sultanate especially of alauddin khilji and your muhammad bin tughlaq then you have the administration of the mughal period then your marathas these four administrations are important from the perspective of prelims as well as mains from where questions can figure now alauddin khilji had maintained a large permanent standing army this was especially in the fear of the uh, raids of mongols or the invasion from mongols so alauddin khilji had maintained a large permanent standing army paid them in cash from the royal treasury according to farishta he had recruited 4 lakh 75000 cavalry men and he had introduced two systems one was your dag what was dag dag was branding of horses theek hai and the other system was your uh, hulia hulia those who speak hindi would be familiar with this term hulia is basically a descriptive list of the soldiers theek hai so these were two systems that had been introduced by uh alauddin khilji and in order to ensure maximum efficiency a strict review of the army from time to time was carried out now which of the following are correctly matched battle of haldigati 1540 c here the battles have been provided and the corresponding years have been provided you have to match which of the pairs are correctly matched see battle of haldigati now this was fought between you must know who it was fought between a question can be framed on this too uh haldigati battle the famous battle of haldigati was fought, fought between uh, the forces of akbar and maharana pratap now this is a very famous battle you must have you must be aware of this so this was for, uh, fought in 1576 theek hai uh the second battle of panipat second battle of panipat was fought between akbar and hemu the first was akbar and hemu and this was in 1556 the first battle was between uh, babar who had founded the mughal empire in india and your ibrahim lodi right ibrahim lodi lodis were the last uh, of the delhi sultanate right uh and the second the battle of chausa see the battle of chausa the battle of chausa and uh, the last option the last statement battle of bilgram both of these battles were fought between humayun who was the second mogul emperor and sher shah suri sher shah suri had a brief intervening period in between the mogul empire theek hai na uh and humayun had been displaced from his throne theek hai by sher shah suri who was an afghan uh, ruler is this clear so this chronology of events is important now this 47th question deals with sites what are sites it is also known as the washington convention second statement it is not legally binding on the parties third statement it does not take place of national laws so this entire question deals with your sites now what is sites sites is uh, the convention on international trade in endangered species of wild fauna and flora this is also known as your washington convention theek hai 
Now, this is a multilateral treaty. It's a multilateral treaty that was drafted as a result of resolution adapted in 1963 at a meeting of members of International Union for Conservation of Nature. CITES has entered into force in 1975. Further, CITES is legally binding. Okay, na? The second statement is wrong. Hai. CITES kya hai? It is basically a convention on international trade. Okay, na? International trade should be regulated. So this is for the regulation of international trade in endangered species of wild flora and fauna. Okay, na? Further, this was uh, this came into force in 1975. It was formed in the background of a convention or a meeting of members of IUCN, International Union for Conservation of Nature. IUCN also releases the famous red list, which gives the status, conservation status of various plants and animals. And sites is legally binding. It is legally binding on the parties. Okay. Further, sites only provides, the role of sites is only to provide a broad framework on which the national laws of the country should be framed. And it does not take place. It does not replace your national laws. Okay, na? national laws remain. Take. So, this was about your sites. 48th question. Consider the following statements regarding gadiyals. What are gadiyals? Gadiyals are basically crocodile-like species. Now, these are distinguished from crocodiles by the famous uh, ghada on their snouts. Okay. This is the snout of snout matlab uska moon and this is your entire crocodile. So it has something like which is a pot, an inverted pot kind of shape at the end of its snout. This is called your ghada from which your term uh, from which the name ghadiyal has been derived. Is this clear? Okay. So ghadiyal has been derived from this. Now the statements are they are recognized as critically endangered by IUCN. Poaching is a major threat, especially in National Chambal River Sanctuary, which had been a stronghold of the species for several decades. Which of the above statements are correct? Now, both these statements are correct. Okay, na? The IUCN has, Ghadiyal is basically critically endangered. Further, the basic, most, uh, these Ghadiyals are mostly found in the Chambal Ravines. Okay, na? Chambal ravines. Now, uh, the point should be noted about all crocodilian species uh, such as crocodiles or alligators, gadiyals, etc. They cannot remain in water for long. They must come out uh, into the open uh, to bask to regulate their temperatures, body temperatures. And they do so externally. Humans control their temperatures internally. Human, humans regulate their temperatures internally. Whereas the crocodiles, alligators, such species, they have to depend on the external environment for regulating their internal body temperature. Okay? And these are what are known as your cold-blooded animals. Right? Most of the reptilians are cold-blooded animals. Cold-blooded means what? These cannot regulate their temperatures on their own. Matlab? They cannot regulate their temp body temperatures internally. They have to depend on the external environment. And so crocodile or crocodilian species come out into the open to bask in the sun to regulate their body temperature. Okay. So these will not be found in the deep oceans or the seas. They are mostly found along the coastlines or the riverbeds. So, poaching is a major threat, especially in the National Chambal River Sanctuary, which had been a stronghold. Fishing depletes the prey base and uh, ghadiyals quickly drown when enmeshed in nets. So, moreover, fishermen are not so sympathetic to the plight of ghadiyals, which they view as rivals. Naturally, because they uh, even the ghadiyals could be a threat to uh, the humans as well. Okay. So, it is basically saying the human and the animal conflict. Uh, has been a threat to uh, the ghadiyals as well. Now, 49th question. The governor can exercise his personal discretion in the selection of the chief minister when there is no clear majority in the assembly. Second, when a money bill is reserved for the consideration of the president, the president can give his assent. 
withhold his assent or return the bill for reconsideration. Which of the above statements is R correct? Okay. Now answer. Okay. See, government can exercise his personal discretion. This has been provided explicitly by the constitution. Okay. The governor has the right to exercise his discretion in the case of no clear majority. That is when there is a hanging uh, state legislature. Right? Much similar to your parliament. If there is no clear majority in a state legislature, then the governor can exercise his personal discretion to appoint a chief minister. Okay? Uh, the second statement, when a money bill is reserved for consideration of the president. Now see, when a money bill is reserved, the president has two options. He can either give his assent, give assent, giving assent matlab, the president has basically approved the bill. Approved the bill meaning the money bill will now become an act. Or he can withhold his assent, that is he can refuse to give assent. In this case, what will happen is the bill will end <clears throat> and it will not become an act. However, the president does not have the option of returning the bill in case of a money bill. Money bill in the case of uh, the, the state money bill which has been reserved by the governor for the assent of the president. Okay? So, uh, this is the answer for 49th question. Let us move on to 50th question. Which of the statements is are incorrect with respect to uh, the National Human Rights Commission? A. The recommendations of the NHRC are not binding. True. They are only recommendatory in nature. NHRC has the powers of a civil court. True. NHRC has the power to award any relief including monetary. Now this is wrong. NHRC does not have the power to award monetary relief. NHRC can take suo moto action on violation of human rights. This is true. Okay, nah? So, what, which is the, the question is asking about the incorrect statement. So, the answer should be C. The recommendations of the NHRC are not binding. It, however, the NHRC, however, move, can move to the Supreme Court if the recommendations are not accepted. So, this uh, option the NHRC has. Option B is correct. NHRC has the powers of a civil court, so it can conduct investigations into any allegation of human right violations, summon any person during the course of investigation and reach conclusion based on it. So, NHRC basically has the powers of a civil court, remember this. However, it has no power to punish, it cannot punish or award uh, relief, any kind of relief. It cannot punish or neither award, it can neither punish nor can it award any relief to the victim. It has the powers of civil court under which it can investigate into allegation of human rights okay? or summon a person. Further, the D option, NHRC is empowered to take suo moto. Suo moto meaning it can take action on its own initiative. Take okay? action on its own initiative. It does not have to wait for the case to be presented to the NHRC. 51st, consider the following pairs, the region. See, now here certain uh, regions have been provided and the, what those regions are famous for producing. So, citrus fruits, Devanagari in Karnataka, mango, Mewat in Haryana. See, mango is mostly a tropical. It is basically a tropical fruit and Haryana is a uh, temperate. It's, Haryana is in temperate or semi-temperate region. So, uh, second option is clearly wrong. Okay, na? Now, uh, Coimbatore chili. Okay, let us look at the explanation. Now, here the crop type and their corresponding regions have been provided. Now, this is based on general knowledge and uh, such questions can be. This is a part of economic geography. You should be familiar with the major producers of India. And uh, since nowadays, horticulture and agriculture both are prominently in news. Such a question can figure in your prelims. So, you should be uh, aware, broadly aware of which region produces what. Now, this is a question on mapping. You have to arrange the following hills in northeast. All these hills are in northeast from west to east. Now, see, 
where are the garo hills the garo hills are here okay next you have the mishmi the mishmi hills can be located here in arunachal pradesh garo hills are in meghalaya or assam region yaha pe theek hai na now where is the patkai boom patkai boom can be seen here theek hai now you must be familiar this map should be clearly imprinted in your brain theek hai na you should remember it forever you have the garo khasi jaintia and uh, which are the other mikir hills these are your mikir hills this is the patkai boom these are the mishmi theek hai yahan pe aapka abor dafla etc theek hai na so uh, to arrange from we have seen the location this is your garo uh, this is mishmi this is patkai boom and this is your mikir so now you can uh, correctly arrange the hills from west to east okay any basin now this is a question from modern india any basin was a part of national secular society she was a founder of central hindu school and college in banaras true she was the one who started the young india no young india was not started by any basin young india is related to mahatma gandhi theek hai na so now let us look at the explanation uh, statement 1 is correct Uh, any basin had joined the national secular society in 1874 and she had worked in free thought and radical movements led by charles bradlaugh mp the statement 2 is also correct in 1898 after much planning she founded the central hindu school and the college in banaras now varanasi a few years later she also started the central hindu school for girls now such questions based on personalities important personalities of history are very very important from the perspective of your prelims every year a question has been asked from famous personalities theek hai so you should note down you should have a note of what these famous personalities have uh, done in their course of freedom struggle statement 3 is incorrect any basin had founded two newspapers the common wealth and new india for india's freedom young india is related to mahatma gandhi theek hai now let us move on further uh, which of the following are the right bank tributaries of ganga bagmati gandak sindh and betwa see now gandak is a left bank tributary theek hai na the right bank tributaries of ganga are yamuna chambal banas sindh betwa kain son damodar left bank tributaries are ramganga gomti uh, ghagra kali gandak gudhi gandak bagmati and koshi river so just have a clear idea of what are the tributaries of ganga river yahan pe we'll draw a rough diagram theek hai see in this diagram you have a rough picture of uh, sorry you have the diagram for the entire ganga river you can see the tributaries now since the river is flowing from this way so these are the left bank tributaries and these are your right bank tributaries you can see uh, this is your yamuna chambal sindh uh, kali sindh betwa kain son rihant etc these are your right bank tributaries theek hai now let us look at the 55th uh, question The RBI has recently constituted a high-level task force under the chairmanship of Y M Deosthali to assess the need and scope for setting up a public credit registry in India. With reference to PCR, consider the following statements. PCR refers to an extensive database of credit information of borrowings from scheduled commercial banks only. it will also include data from entities like market regulator sebi the corporate affairs ministry gstn your goods and services trans uh, tax network and the insolvency and bankruptcy board of india theek hai then you have it will increase the credit availability to msmes and support the policy of financial inclusion which of the above statements are wrong now to solve this question first of all we must understand what is a public credit registry see public credit registry is nothing but public credit credit cre what does credit mean this means loans so a pcr is nothing but it's an information repository information repository 
this will collect and collate the information of all individual and corporate borrowers now why will this collection of information help the banks with this information the banks will be able to distinguish between the good borrower and the bad borrowers good and the bad borrowers and thus they can offer uh, attractive interest rates to the uh, good borrowers and a uh, higher interest rate to the bad borrowers okay so this is basically rbi has initiated steps to uh, set up a wide based digital pcr to capture details of all borrowers including willful defaulters and also pending legal suits in order to check financial delinquencies okay so the answer for this question is a one only right now moving on now see the explanation here that is provided is not entire okay na something is missing here uh, we'll come back to this question at the end of the chapter okay now let us move on to 56th question see consider the following pairs now these are a given set of ports and these are the countries now what are these these are your string of pearl ports okay na uh the using see the china is using the msr msr is under obor one belt one road initiative okay na so it is using the msr as a pretext for the strategy of string of pearls which is basically surrounding india on all sides okay na so i would request you to kindly go to the uh, atlas and look at these ports and also search for the internet of all the various ports that are being developed by china okay uh as which are strategically important for china and which are threatening for india 57th question with reference to your cash reserve ratio consider the following statements all scheduled commercial banks are required to meet crr requirements now this is correct a decrease in crr will decrease the cash availability of the banks a decrease in crr now this is wrong if crr crr is what what is crr we'll see it uh, crr is one of the quality wrong this is a quantitative rbi pays 4% interest to banks this is again wrong theek hai na so which is the correct acha uh, so the question is asking for the wrong statements therefore the answer is d crr is an effective instrument of credit control theek hai a high crr reduces the cash for lending and a low crr increases the cash for lending now crr is one of the quantitative the reserves kept with rpi as a part of the crr regime does not give any interest to banks now what is the crr crr is your cash reserve ratio right cash reserve ratio now what is this cash reserve ratio this is the share of the total banks deposit total banks deposit with uh that is mandated by the rbi and this share of the total banks deposit has to be kept with the rbi in the form of liquid cash and this shall be inaccessible to the banks for any lending or commercial activity and a very important point no interest is given by rbi on this cash which is deposited with the uh rbi mission raftar recently now mission raftar is basically to increase the speed of in uh, trains in indian railways therefore this was announced by ministry of railways the mission envisages a target of doubling of average speed of trains freight trains freight matlab what is freight trains goods trains increasing the average speed of all non suburban passenger trains by 25 km per hour in the next 5 years With reference to the recently launched Gaj Yatra, consider the following statements. Ministry of Tourism recently launched a Gaj Yatra campaign, a nationwide campaign to protect elephants. The campaign is being led by Wildlife Trust of India. ठीक है? See, now it is not Ministry of Tourism. ठीक है ना? You may think that Gaj Yatra, Yatra would mean tourism. It's but it is not. Uh, the ministry is Environment Ministry. the campaign is being led by the world life wildlife trust of india and under this campaign an elephant mascot will be taken across districts frequented by jumbo herd for generating awareness among the people theek uh, hai this is basically intended to avoid uh, the 
ह्यूमन दी एलिफेंट कैजुअलिटी ड्यू टू ह्यूमन एनिमल कॉन्फ्लिक्ट ठीक है ना एंड सो अवेयरनेस विल बी स्प्रेड बाय द एलिफेंट मास्कॉट दैट विल बी अपॉइंटेड to go into these districts that are frequented by jumbo herd jumbo herds matlab the elephants uh consider the following statements with reference to the index of eight core industries the base year for this index is 2045 index is released quarterly revised eight core industries have a combined weight of approximate 40% okay and uh, the third statement is the fifth the fourth statement is it is released compiled and released by nsso of mosby see Uh, now the first thing, the base year has been recently changed from 2004-5 to 2011-12. Okay, and uh, the second, this shift is in line with the shift in uh, the new base year index of IIP, which is your index of industrial uh, production. The index is released quarterly. False. This index is released every month. Okay. Now this index of eight core industries is a production volume index. It's an important lead indicator for overall India industrial performance and general economic activities in the economy. It covers eight sectors. Now this is an important index. You must remember the eight core industries according to weightage, either increasing or decreasing. Okay, na? Uh, and uh, let us come to the last statement. The index is compiled and released by Office of Economic Advisor DIP. in ministry of commerce and industry and not by mosby theek hai so 